that's how life should work. Um, speaking of luck or otherwise, we hear a lot about negative outcomes for children in education in Tassie. A lot of work has been done in child and family centres to try and turn around those beginning kind of thousand days for people. Professor Nick Hopwood, Associate Professor Nick Hopwood from the University of Technology in Sydney School of Education, he's been studying how they're going. G'day. Hi. What's the parameters of your research? Well, we had a three-year study funded by the Australian Research Council. We started looking really up close at a few services in New South Wales. Then we followed 15 families over a year to see if the outcomes of kind of services and interventions for them really lasted. And then this year we've been looking across three states to see if we can find the best of what's going on in Australia. So looking here, you're looking at the child and family centres. If I've never heard what one of those is, what happens at them? Well, there are 12 of them in Tasmania and they're kind of like a one-stop shop where families can go without appointments. Most of them walk or live very nearby in their communities. You can go for play activities. Parents can go and get a coffee there's like a very sense a homely sense about them often you'll find there are child and family health nurses available they can arrange support with social workers physios occupational therapists they'll do developmental play activities and education and development checks as well as providing a lot of support for the adults the parents who are around these young children and what difference are they making what are you seeing they're making absolutely huge differences. So these are for children who are born into some of the most adverse and disadvantaged circumstances in Tasmania, indeed in the whole of Australia. And many of them had parents who weren't parented very effectively themselves, may have been wards of the state, may not have good models of parenting to build on, may be very suspicious of services and seeking help for understandable reasons. And the first thing that they're achieving is getting people in through the door. That can take weeks, months, even years of outreach work on people's doorsteps, building trust, helping them come into the fold and become part of a community. And after that, a whole number of amazing things can happen. In some of these families, you've got like kids who are over five who've never been part of this and kids under five. What's going to be different for those children? Do you think? <coughs> Excuse me. A huge amount is going to be different. They're going to be benefiting from developmental play activities, lots of gross motor things, so outdoor play where they can be learning balance and learning to climb and develop confidence in their physical bodies. They're going to be having structured play, so they'll be ready for school in better ways. They'll be used to doing things collectively with other children. Many parents are finding that managing aggressive behaviour is becoming more kind of doable with their younger children who are going through these centres. Parents themselves are developing competence. Some of them in the higher refugee communities are developing literacy and English skills. Parents are finding pathways to employment. They're helping with addressing adult mental health issues. Children with behaviour disorders or conduct disorders are getting help earlier. A huge number of benefits. We've heard stories in Tasmania of people sort of trying to perpetuate disadvantage within their own communities so their kids don't leave. Tessie. The parents coming into these places obviously have different vision for themselves and their children. Is it all mums? Is it's it not grandparents? Are there a few dads? There are some dads involved. Yes, it's been highlighted for a while that that's a key thing with the child and family centres is to involve the whole of the family. So that's mothers, fathers, other caregivers, grandparents. I've been there, I've been to a sausage sizzle with dads on a Wednesday evening in one of the child and family centres. There are fathers involved in the playgroups right here near Hobart. Yeah, it's a whole of family approach. What do the parents say to you? about how this changes their maybe sense of trust in the systems around them? Um, some remarkable stories were told when I was speaking to parents. They all say if they've got older children, they wish these centres had been here before and that these really make a valuable feature of their communities and if they had one wish, it would be to keep them. They, they're used to the communities having things come and disappear and these are something they really treasure. Is there a danger that it'll create division within families? If you've got a child with that great start, with different expectations, they're likely to go further, aren't they? Do you think those other children might want to drag them back? I think there's a cascade effect, and we're starting to see parents talking about this, that what they're learning about the warm and a strong attachment they can have with their younger children does kind of spill over into their relationships with other children, and they become more confident and familiar engaging with schools. That'll have a knock-on effect. And you've got to, you know, starting to help a family at any point is always a good thing. How can this research help those communities keep those centres? Well, I don't think the centres, I have no, no understanding that the centres themselves are under threat, but the approach to research I take is to look look at what's possible in the existing conditions and to see how you can use that to go a bit further. Because all the time people are asking for more money or more time and it's not always easy to provide that. So when we do research that says, hang on, these are a few small things that could have really big positive effects and won't cost you much if not any money, that's the way we try and help. 
Associate Professor Nick Hopwood is presenting some of this work at the Peter Underwood Centre, uh, the Peter Underwood Centre presentation in Hobart tomorrow. I'm off to Launceston today. Uh, so if you look up the Peter Underwood Centre, you'll be able to get the details of that presentation. Great to talk to you this morning. My pleasure. Thank you. 17 past 7, ABC.